I am unashamed. What about you? Welcome back to uh, Unashamed. Um, Dad, I got a call from Jersey Joe. Said he was doing a little bit of uh, installation work at your house this past yeah, uh, week. Commode. I went by there, you know, I, I was looking at it like it was a rattlesnake. You have a self washing <laughs> commode? You know, I'm sitting there, you know, it's just a wall of things you can make happen. It's pasted to the door head high. So. I missed you the know, memo on you this. Want water on your butt. You want water here, water there. Just punch this, punch this, and get back. Hold, hold on. Well, why would you buy something? I waited dead by a left and was snuck back in there. And started, <laughs> and I said, "Good grief!" I said, "Boy, they're they're making a new 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 world out of a commode." Well, Phil, why? How do you have this? I just oh. looked up and I had somebody up there nailing, screwing, and trying, you know. And I, I said, "What are you doing?" And I said, "What? Well, who? Where are we? I, I was trying to slow him down, but the jersey was doing the all the work, and I was just watching him. Well, most so, people, uh, I started no. to ask him, "Did you uh, check with somebody before you do this?" That's what I mean. How does this get the okay? Most people have a plumbing I, problem. Said, well, what got me was I reached up on the wall, and he said, just mash this one and this one. You have two choices out of about 15 things. So, and, and, I, and I went back. I waited there. I cleared out, and I just would punch. I looked down there the first time, and I saw a pipe moving my way. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> I hope that don't, don't, don't slide off. <laughs> Uh, oh, wow. Well, that's the first time I oh, finally found out oh, the Chinese right. and the Japanese were behind the whole thing. They so, built uh, it. They got us again. So, yeah, oh, yeah. So, um, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, wow. just, I knew all I had to do was ask the question. He so, said it was like a rattlesnake. Yeah. How did you hear about this, Al? Well, joke. So, so Lisa bought mom a bidet. Oh. Um, what's it what, called? It's, it's called? what's called a bidet. A bidet? Bidet. Oh, what's a spell? It's French. B-I-D-E-T. It's actually French in nature. Uh, I think they came up with well, it. The but, French came up with it. But the French it's came up with it, but the, I guess the, it was it was probably made in China. I'm sure Dad's right about that. B-A-D-E-T. B-I-D-E-T, I think. What? B-I-D-E-T. I never heard of this. So, oh, yep, she, there it is. She got it from Mom, and... Um, but mom has has been you know been sick. We we talked about this before, and so she still hadn't gotten back home yet. She's now in a a rehab, getting stronger. Should be home this week, Lord willing. And thank you for the prayers, everybody. So Joe wanted to make sure and get this installed before she got home. So you know, Dad's been bachelor here for a few a week, so he didn't know about this. And so Joe, who is quite handy. Uh, went out and he told me he laid it all out on the table, all the parts and everything. And he said, Dad came in. He said, Dad looked at it and he said, "What? Th- what's this? And he and you, he told you. And you looked at it and said, huh. And you went over and sat in your chair. He said, you never came back over, but you just kept looking over there every once in a while when he was putting it all together. But he told me a little bit about Dad's initial reaction to it. I just, I thought it was really funny because I knew this was going to, you know, but I well, you know, we well, have one too. But it's I, I've I've always been a little cautious about it too. I just typed it in there. It's like the top five advantages: better hygiene, yep, limits germ spread, yep, enhance your bathroom experience. Now, what is that? Enhance your <laughs> bathroom experience. They just all right, does it need to be that, enhanced? That we've got two positives and just. Just a random statement. Yeah, I've taken uh, many, 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 many dumps in the woods. <laughs> the best, the best leaf tree is a is a is get a, on the leaves. It's a big acorn tree. Oh. That big oh, acorn tree you, gets the best leaves. Well, right, that needs to be you know, your, you, your best book. Before you stop, book, you need book. to look up and see what kind of trees up there because that's a wide leaf tree. You need a coffee table book. That yep. just describes that leaves in the woods, put it in sporting goods. Well, this is the first time I've ever seen pipes but this coming is... my way and not that far away. When dad's like, in the oh. woods, that's a bidet, not a bidet. So. <laughs> it's better for the environment. Because you don't use it as toilet paper. Yeah, four. And, uh, and it could lower your risk for hemorrhoids. 
So there you go. And I've heard that from people, which is why, yeah. Thanks. There you go. Okay. Well, look, they're not cheap. I'm looking at them. They're... No, it was a nice gift. Um, yeah, they're expensive. It was a nice gift for mom. So, and, but it'll be great for her and and where she's at. I wouldn't have done it, but yeah. <laughs> well, the fact you went along with it shows that you're it mellow, take, mellowing. Take, it took him about forty five minutes. Forty five minutes. He had it finished and ready to go. And I thought he was a software uh, man. Not, not. Oh, he's an everything man. He can yeah. cook. He can put in bidets. He does yeah. software. The man can do anything. It's a computer whiz. Computer America. whiz. And he passed that on to his son, and I'm praising God every day for that because his son is married my granddaughter. And so that means that sort of uh, ability will now be at my house, which is uh, I'm very much. He fixed my truck the other day in 10 minutes. That's right. It was going to cost me about 1000 bucks. He did it for 10 minutes. Oh, I know it. So the man's handy. So, Jace, what did you do? You, you well, there's smoke. nowhere to go from here but up. But <laughs> well, I figure we better start there, then we got to work our way. I out. feel like we need a transition that's not. <laughs> like we got to have like a some, some intermediate uh, conversation before we move into the. To yeah, the well, Jay said. Uh, Jay well, I spoke at Celebrate Recovery Friday, our local chapter of that. It was packed, raucous. I love the. I love the crowd. I do that ever so often. It's fantastic. By the way, we've been doing CR for 20 years at WFR. I think this year is our 20th year. And, I mean, we have the, if not the largest, the second largest Celebrate Recovery in the whole North American continent. It's right here in West Monroe. It's about 500 people. So it's a strange relationship I have because, you know, it's I, I don't really have that background as far as, you know, we've documented you know, I was kind of the older brother in the prodigal son story. Yeah, I mean, most of these people here struggle with alcohol, some sort of addiction, or uh, drugs. And you know, I've never been drunk, and I haven't done drugs. There's a steady stream of them. We're baptized, and it was a couple, one or two of them the other day, but five yesterday morning. Well, because our our CR is so strong here, now they've built recovery houses. They buy houses and retool them where they can hold eight to 12 men or women in the women's homes. And so people are coming here from all over the country. So it's not like it's just locals. I mean, people come here from everywhere. So but to me, this is part of this, is what the kingdom should look like. Oh, if you're going to go out and share Jesus and, and part of that are people who are a prisoner of sin. And if you're going to share Jesus, well, it's going to take a bit to get them on their feet. I mean, you can't spend... Wouldn't you say, I mean, and this may be too big of an analogy, but Jase, wouldn't you say it is the sort of the lepers and lame of our culture in terms of what you I saw mean, Jesus I mean, from a spiritual, from a spiritual standpoint, yes. I mean... It, these and, people, most people are like, don't, not here. Like, we're trying to do church here. We don't need this. The majority well, of them, I noticed, shed tears when they're standing in the water and I'm talking to them, on what's fixed to happen. They They... They cry. Well, it's a way to start over. I baptized a couple yesterday in Oklahoma. So Rucker. Both in tears. I think Rucker's part of the management team on this. He's one of our directors, he and Derek. We had him on the podcast. Yeah, and Rucker's has a great story. By the way, he's on I Am Second if you want to see his story. He told it on the podcast. but Yeah, he he was here. Well, he introduced me. Yeah. And uh, I I revisited his story because, you know, how he he always – when he introduced him, he says the same thing. He's like, because he, we actually gave him a job, duck commander. Yeah. And because uh, I remember the day when he was interviewed, uh, at the time the guy that was uh, part of that was Grant. And he said, hey, let me ask you something. He's like, we just had a guy apply for a job here. And, uh, you know, I just asked him, kind of about himself and he said like the first sentence out of his mouth was he was a convicted felon he said what do you think about that i said well what do you think about it (laughs) i mean you're the hiring guy (laughs) and he said well i mean you know and at this time we were basically hiring anybody with a pulse yeah to get product out the door at document i said well my next sentence would have been something having to do with jesus (laughs) And he said, well, that's what I did. He said, I basically said, look, this is this is what we're all about. Yeah. And uh, 
I said, oh, well, I'm good with it then. So I said, where else could you have gone in the world? And in the first minute when you're applying for a job, say you're a convicted felon, and we actually said, yeah, we'll hire you. <laughs> so, Which is what happened. Yeah. And he eventually came to the Lord. And, uh, you know, I didn't know his story at the time, but. You know, it turned out he was I mean, he was in a gang and uh it's a tremendous you know, family thing. breakdown when he was a kid. Yep. And this is when you look around and, and see our problems, you realize this is this is what happens. Here here's a guy with, with nobody on a training him. On with, a big scale. And we believe, uh, and Phil kinda sowed this seed in all of our lives when we were young, that if someone comes to you and they're already confessing their sins, maybe the Lord sent him. And, you know, you fast forward, what is this, 20 years later? Well, in his case, less than 10 years later, he went from being a guy who got hired at Duck Commander and then coming to Christ to being one of the ministry leaders of one of our biggest ministries in our church. Good dude. So there you go. So anyway, he's to show like, you potential, you know. So I was like, I can't believe they keep asking me back. And he's like, Well, I keep asking you back. He said, Because you bring a different perspective. And and I had asked him, I said, Well, when's the last time somebody just gave a Bible, Jesus focused Bible sermon here? And he said, Well, probably the last time I spoke. So I said, Okay, well, let, let, let's That's do what it. we're doing. So he I, also asked me to come in in a few weeks so I can clean up whatever you messed up. So Yeah, well, I don't think I'm that. I think I got <laughs> I'm them, kidding. Got I'm them started up. <laughs> I so, am coming uh, a few weeks. I had ago. some funny, but they didn't get my jokes, which is okay. I mean, they laughed several times, but I wasn't joking when they laughed. So that's just <laughs> but that's your M.O., Jase. It you happened. should have laughed. They didn't. And when they, it happened. Yeah. You so tried I to be a, funny, nothing. I told a funny story about, look, I, read, I quoted uh, 1 Peter 4.1, and we'll get into this with with Saul. There's there's in part of his conversions, which is in Acts nine, Acts uh, twenty two and twenty six. Twenty two and twenty six. But there's a verse in there where it says, you know, when the Lord said he'll he wanted him to go back to Jerusalem, and he said and and give him an opportunity to suffer, yeah, for the Lord. I thought what what a what a statement. But I read a uh, quote of First Peter four one that says, since Christ suffered in his body. Arm yourselves with the same attitude because he who has done so, it'd be interesting to see your uh, translation on that, Zach, First Peter 4, 1, but it said, he who suffered in his body is done with sin, which is kind of a strange verse. A lot of truth but, in that. But, but there's a point where when you're out, I made the illustration, when you're on offense for the Lord, it's actually a really good defense mm-hmm. to your morality. Yeah, because because they spend most of their time, which I said this, talking about not doing wrong, because they're trying to get away from whatever habit or addiction that they were involved in for years. Yeah, the word in their community is relapse, so they're they're trying not to relapse. That's the word. So I told I told a story that that was a true story. Uh, I don't know if I've ever shared it here, but I said, you know, you can. It's a way to get you out of trouble because you're you're on the offense, and so I told about one of the times I was I was pulled over because I made this deal about you know I'm a son of God, Jesus. I believe Jesus is at the right hand of God. He's my Lord, and I'm under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And I did my little gig that I did on the podcast about the craze of artificial intelligence. Because now they say, you know, in five years that they're going to have an artificial intelligence being that's smarter than all the humans. Yep. That, that, they believe that. Yep. And I said, what, what about the humans that have the eternal intelligence of the Holy Spirit in them? They're not, they forgot about that group. He's not going to be smarter than them. Did they or, like that yeah. line? That was uh, I was going to show you that since you brought it up. This was from a good friend of mine. Somebody's down already come up with that. Yeah, uh, hang on. Let's let's take a break. Zach, through the years, uh, you've worked with a lot of young men, especially college age guys. Would you say that uh, pornography uh, has a negative effect on the development of 
uh, young people, especially young men. I think it might be one of the greatest travesties of, of our lifetime. And even if it's not an ongoing addiction situation, we've all been affected because when we're, especially young young men or young boys, uh, there's a curiosity, there's an allure, someone has a picture, someone has something. Yeah. And so it, it just creates these false uh, narratives of what, you know, relationships are supposed to be like and what sex is supposed to be like. Uh, one of our sponsors, uh, Victory by Covenant Eyes, uh, these guys have been involved in this world for many, many years. Um, they're the number one trusted accountability software for over 23 years for Christians seeking to live a porn-free life. Because I wish we could say... It doesn't affect Christians like it does the world, but in this case, that's just not true. Uh, many of us, yeah, we've experienced the damaging effects either in our own life or someone that we love. Uh, Victory by Covenant Eyes is a powerful tool that helps Christians who are serious uh, and want to quit porn for good or never start, of course, which is always better. Uh, many verses about how accountability uh, matters. Uh, Proverbs twenty-seven seventeen says, iron sharpens iron. And so that's what these guys do. Uh, CovenantEyes.com slash Phil is where you go to download Victory on all your devices. Once that's installed, Victory runs silently in the background of your devices, uses cutting-edge AI technology to watch the screen for behavior that doesn't match your goals. So this is a case, Jace, where AI is actually helping us. Um, You invite a trusted friend to be your ally. This is someone who can walk beside you. Your ally will get push notifications of any porn use, and that brings your accountability in. So living a porn-free life will bring you a new freedom to live honestly. And accountability is not others calling you out on your sin, but others calling you up to the person that you are in Christ. You can get started on this path to recovery uh, for free by visiting covenanteyes.com slash fill. Use the promo code Phil for 30 days free or by clicking on the link in the show notes today. That's covenanteyes.com slash Phil. I thought I invented that. No, 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 you did. Oh, oh, so, so he, he, he was, he was listening. <laughs> <laughs> All right, get the lawyers involved. We got we have a copyright. This is my this is my good friend Craig uh, Jones from uh, from down in Gulf Shores, and he is uh, he's had knee surgery, so he's got a lot of time with his hands. Now right this now. is a good idea. So, so he, he was listening on the idea. podcast. He's a graphic design guy, so he sent me this. So the t shirt that sent that's the guy that sent the email and said, "Are y'all doing something with this?" <laughs> No, is not that, that guy. Oh, I, this I is knew somebody guy. was going to do something. But it says, oh. don't settle for artificial. That's kind of in small letters. Dot, it's dot, got dot. an E-I, big E-I. Though. And then it's a big circle with a big E-I, and under it is eternal intelligence. And then below the circle, it says, when Christ gives eternal. Don't mm. settle for artificial when Christ gives eternal. He's, he's a yeah. graphics guy, so he I sent me that. It. He was just listening. I mean, to it, it's a, it's a real conversation. I mean, you start thinking about the implications of artificial intelligence, deep fake. I mean, what, I, we I had this conversation today with one of our pastors. I mean, with the way technology is advancing in the very, very near future, very near future, you're going to have video footage of people doing things that they never did, and it's going to be we're going to flood the internet with with images and with videos of pe- uh, with the deep fake of the AI stuff. You can literally just type in your computer, spit me out a, a, a video of Jace Robertson robbing a bank and, and it'll, it'll produce that. And so now a deep fake to me is when I'm going on a post pattern <laughs> in the yard He's, he's still doing post And, and we're going to do a pump and go the quarterback yeah. pump. So tell me what you mean by that. So a deep fake is is a it's it's a video that is generated. It's not even video because it's digital, but it's a digital vid, like uh, image imagery of of you doing stuff that you never did. That's part of it. I mean, you can actually take. That's what they um, name that. They need a better name yeah, than that. That's yeah, it's like it's there. Yeah, it's, it's it looks real, and so as you having a conversation. We could actually you can actually take your face, put Phil's voice. In your face, and your it, I mean, it is bizarre what they can do. But the, but one of the big things that the experts are pr- predicting, the experts, whoever they are, are one of the problems with deep fake, a, the uh, AI machine learning, and just where all of that's headed is that is they're saying we're not going to be able to know what truth is. We're going to have a, a, a 
a crisis of truth. How will we know what's actually real when the Internet is flooded with fake images? Now, Phil will be immune to all of this because he does not get on the Internet. But for the but for but other you're, people, you're, saying, you're explaining why. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, sounds it's like to me you these are just out there. these are fairy tales using yeah. the images of real people. Yeah, but it yeah. will be hard to distinguish between them. But I think that one of the things we talked about. I mean, well, this is my dictionary. Yeah, but I'm I'm not trying to distinguish now. Well, has a, but what if you see a video of somebody doing something and you're like. I'm kind of with Phil on that. I'm really not seeing the videos of people doing anything except speaking the word of God. Well, that's where you want to camp out. So Zach, you'll like this. The other day we were doing Eric Metaxas' show for Dad's new book. And so we were talking, and Dad says, now here you go, Metaxas. And he reaches over and he grabs his encyclopedia and he starts reading it. And Metaxas says, what what are you reading from there, Phil? He said, the World Book Encyclopedia. And I said, Eric, that's his Google. <laughs> he just pulls it over and starts reading from it. Yeah, it's just, but, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's, there's, I'm with uh, Solomon on this. There's nothing new under the sun. We just have a digital version of it. Yeah. People making up stories. They've been lying and making up stories since we've been around, haven't they? Well, I mean, I think it does give an opportunity, though, for kingdom people. I mean, we, no like, doubt. You, you, you well, mentioned yeah. eternal intelligence. I think that people are going to be searching more for eternal in- intelligence in a world where they can't trust. You can't trust artificial intelligence. So what, what are you going to look for? You're going to look for an intelligence source that is not artificial. And the one thing that we can actually move into is, I, I love the term, by the way. Uh, yeah, it's the, good. Eternal, I mean, it really is. A, so I'm curious where you went term. with them. Too. Well, yeah, let me finish my sermon here. Went. Y'all may need well, this. Saul After hearing Tarsus. this, <laughs> well, hold on, Phil, before we get to Saul, let me just finish my sermon, and then we'll get. So 2 Corinthians 5 is what I read first, but here's what I did. I gave you some stats, because my point was if we're we're out there sharing Jesus, it's going to keep you out of a lot of trouble mm-hmm. morally. Which, which was so you're saying a good defense is an even better offense. Do you remember like in Acts three and four and and, and even in five where where Peter kept saying we can't help but speak about this? They're like, hey, stop! We're going to put you in jail. He's like, we we can't help it. The the it was a movement. It was a declaration of Jesus. Well, if you're involved in something like that, which is what Celebrate Recovery is, well, we need to be speaking that. To where you came from in packs. And you'd be amazed at how how good your behavior is going to be while you're doing that. And so that that was my point. If you're willing to go out there and suffer for Jesus. But before I read the Second Corinthians 5, this is where I went with it. I I think you'll uh you'll like this. I gave these stats, uh population on the earth. Do y'all know what it is? Eight billion, I think. Now. Yeah, it's over eight billion. Look, they actually have a ticker of the current population now. It's fascinating. You can just stare at it. It's like people are being born. People are dying. You're literally in seconds. You're watching people being born. Yeah, it's just now. I don't know if that's a AI thing. I did see that on the internet, Zach. So you have to research that. So there's eight point one billion as of three or four days ago, and. Look, this is scary. The population has more than doubled since I was born. Wow. In 54 years. 55? Guess what the average age is on the globe. What is the average age? I want to see how close y'all get to this. Average age. What is the average age of a person on the earth? I'd say well, 30, 30 quit years. Quit looking it up, Zach. What would you say, Phil? I'd say, I'd say 30 years. I was going to say He 30. got it. Yeah. 30.7. Mainly because. This is a man without the internet. <laughs> yeah. The man, with it's well, like the man without right the internet <laughs> has noticed. Who needs the internet? <laughs> that most of humanity, if they make a turn for good or bad, but especially if they make a turn to be good, all you want, you'll be good. I just noticed they all range, the vast majority of them, from 28 to 32. 
Well, you right hit around that. And that's your, and that's your felt, time. You say people are most open to conversion. They you, have they have built a track record. Yep. You had to have gotten record. that from the Holy Spirit. All right. Yep. So let me just get, read you what I read to them. So I said, look, if you're somebody like me, well, I better get a move on here because I'm way past the median age. And there's way more people here than when I started. Yeah. Twice so, as many. So I told him, I was like, that's why I'm here. We, 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 you need to be inspired by the Holy Spirit. Realize you're a son or daughter of the God and Je- uh, of the Father God, and Jesus is at the right hand. Let's take that and go out there and start declaring Jesus Acts style, 2020. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Well, you weren't in the audience, but I don't know if they were doing that. I'd already chosen to be that way. So I read based on uh, Paul's ministry, which is which will tie in with what where we're going because we're going to go to where when he was Saul. So I read verse one of chapter five. It says, "Now we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands." Then I read verse ten that says. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may receive what is due him for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. And there was a noticeable gasp in the audience. That's what I love about Celebrate Recovery. Their emotions are on their their sleeve. I read that verse and I heard a, <gasps> like, somebody's uh, keeping said, a record. Are some of y'all just figuring out that you're going to stand before God after this tent goes down? And then it was kind of like a pause. And then they laughed. I said, I wasn't joking. <laughs> Neither was Paul. <laughs> Some of those Jay's jokes at the wrong time. Let's, uh, let's take another break. So we uh, talk a lot on the podcast about kind of our own personal conviction of being pro-life uh, and how we line up with one of our sponsors, which is a group called Preborn. Yeah. You know, we've been studying about the Apostle Paul, and one of the verses I read, which I thought about what these guys do when I read this, but he said in Galatians 1.15, when God had set him apart from his mother's womb. Yeah. And, you know, we just are unashamed that God created us and knitted us together in our mother's womb. It's what's funny is Jeremiah made the same comment thousands of years earlier. He knew there was something about that womb. And that's what preborn does. Uh, they empower young, expectant mothers who are in crisis because most are not planning this at all and it's unexpected, but we want them to choose life because there is something special about that child. Preborn has rescued hundreds of thousands of babies uh, through ultrasound. So when you, uh, you're you considering abortion, you go to a preborn center, uh, you get to hear the baby's heartbeat. Uh, and when that happens, uh, they call it a divine encounter. And I think that's a great way to describe it. Majority of the time, uh, when a mom hears her baby's heartbeat, she will choose life. And that's what they do. Uh, over the past 15 years, preborn centers have counseled over 450,000 women concerning abortion, and over 200,000 babies have been saved. So these are amazing numbers. We want to support these guys and help them out. Here's what you do. To donate, dial pound 250 and say the keyword baby. That's pound 250 in your phone, keyword baby. Or you can go to preborn.com slash unashamed. That's preborn.com slash unashamed. So I read those two verses to get to verse 11, which says, now watch. Since then, we know what it is to fear the Lord we try to persuade men. Paul said we try to persuade people because the tent, the body's wearing out and we're going to stand before the creator. I mean, we hadn't even got to the main motivation. Those are just general facts yeah, on yeah. why you should try to persuade men. So then I read. Man, the second half of that verse, verse though, Jay, before you leave it. All right. Because in that vein, what we are is plain to God. So he knows who you are. And I hope it is also plain to your conscience. That's read, a heck of a statement. You I, I, a, I think it fit in that good. Could be with, a whole sermon right with, there. With the audience. Yeah, yeah. So I read verse 15, uh, or 14 and 15, Christ's love compels us because we're convinced that one died for all. 
therefore all died, talking about Jesus and what he offers. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. That is the offense helping the defense here. Yeah, it's good. So then I read verse 17. Yep. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. There's the offense again, driven by the Holy Spirit. Because I'd made a big deal about being influenced by the Holy Spirit. And I shared the quick version of the guy being baptized in the ice chest. Mm -hmm. I said, you got to remember that whole conversation started by one comment. Everybody was getting drunk. We're at a meeting in a worldly setting. Hey, Jace, what are you drinking tonight? I said, oh, I'm good. I'm high on Jesus, which caused him to ask me a question. He said, well, oh, I, do you have a problem with that? And I was like, no, I'm high on Jesus. I, I just stuck by my answer. But he thought, oh, you must have a problem with that. I was like, I've never been drunk. I didn't tell him that. But I said, and then here 10 years later, the guy sends me a, sends me a video of him being baptized in an ice chest. <laughs> So then I actually told him a funny story about uh, also, because I was making a point that you're housing the eternal intelligence of Jesus. Because a lot of people say, well, I don't share Jesus. Why? Because they're like, well, I don't know the verses. Of course, I, to that I said, learn them. <laughs> but in the meantime, the verses, John 5, are written about him. That's right. You know yeah. Jesus. Yeah. It's like if I did, and I did an illustration, I said, if if I asked you to describe your best friend, you could tell me about your best friend. That's why they're your they're your best friend. But then you say, Oh, but I can't share Jesus because I don't know enough. Well, you either know him or you don't. That yep. was kind of the way we went. And through. oh, by the way, all the people in the verses didn't have the verses when the time they live when we now have the verses about them. Well, exactly. So and so then in verse 20, I read, we are therefore Christ ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. So then I read uh, 6.1, as God's fellow workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. So I did that. God uses people despite their flaws to declare Jesus. And then I gave an example and uh, I did Jonah. Because I had held up the Bible and said, look, this is about Jesus. That's why I told the stories about you introducing him, because he knows you, you know him. That's how this works, powers in him. So then I did an example of Jonah, and I just read the first two verses, because I said, how many of y'all have heard the story of uh, you know Jonah? About three quarters of the people <laughs> raised their hand. And I said, what's the first thing you think about? And they basically simultaneously said, a big fish swallowed a guy. Yeah. I was like, is that it? Well, that's all they had. And uh, so a lot of people, I'd say, if you went out and shared that, people would say, well, that's, that's, that's just stupid. So I went through a little deal about it. when you go out and share Jesus, a, another reason people don't want to do it, because they, they fear that it's going to make them look stupid. Right. And it is to some people. They're like, oh, that's just a fairy tale. It's a myth. It, it's a deep fake, Zach. So I read the first two verses, and you said, why well, go to Jonah? Because it says, the word of the Lord came to Jonah. Go to the city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come up before me. Seems simple enough. The Lord tells you, go down here and preach. I got, there's a job for you. Next verse, verse three. But Jonah ran away from the Lord. I said, you want a good definition of sin? There it is. And so then I went through uh, kind of Jonah's journey through the eyes of looking at it from your selfish viewpoint, because I got that out of 2 Corinthians 5. You know, do nothing. Uh, what, what was the phrase I had there? What did he say? Uh, Out of selfish ambition. Yeah. Those who no longer live for themselves. You know, Jonah was living for himself. We all have that choice. And so uh, I had, you know, sin is exhausting. Remember, he was asleep in the bottom of the boat. It blinds us. It affects, it, it affects everyone around you. It calluses your conscience. 
It always produces a cover up. It turns you into a liar. Uh, it makes you think either too good about yourself, like you're better than everybody else, or too bad. You're worthless. There's nothing anyone can do. And so, enter the fish. They know the story. And my point was then, I and I said, now that does seem like a crazy story. You're like, you're trying to tell me that God sent a fish and, and ate this guy? And so then I read Matthew 12, 38. I think this is pretty good. Matthew 12, did I say 28? 38. So some of the Pharisees were asking for a miraculous sign. And Jesus said, a wicked and adulterous generation asks for a miraculous sign, but none will be given except the sign of the prophet Jonah. I said, because I was positive. I said, now some of you thought this was a stupid story in the Bible and you were wondering if it was true. Well, here's your validation because the son of God, hmm. God in a human body said, for as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish. Do you believe it now? Hmm. The greatest person to ever walk the earth just validated that story. But then he and, said. And a guy who would have been there. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's why I thought the word of the Lord. When it yeah, said the word exactly. of the Lord came to him. Yeah. Well, who was that? That's right. So the son of man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And so that's when I launched into the message. And that's why I picked up the Bible again. So this is about Jesus. Well, Jace, you know, from time to time, we always talk about our liver here on the Unashamed Podcast. Something about the liver that's intriguing because you don't see it, but you know you have it, but you don't want to hear about it unless there's a problem. And then you're sad because I have a new catchphrase. Uh, new for, catchphrase. For our friends at Liver Health, if you want to be a liver, you got to take care of your liver. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is just too easy. I should be on the team, the marketing team. So the the liver is, Jay's right, it's, it's the offensive lineman uh, of, of the body organs because you need it. Uh, but at the same time, you really only notice when things are going haywire. And that's that's what we don't want. And that's what our friends at Liver Health Formula are trying to keep from happening. Uh, if you have a fatty liver, which happens with 100 million Americans, unfortunately, you're three and a half times more likely to have heart failure. So it's not just the liver, it affects everything else. Your liver is the one that kind of uh, filters your entire body and your organs. So you don't need a sluggish fatty liver. You're going to gain more weight, you're going to lose energy. Your liver has over 500 key functions that every day help you stay healthy. So we've got a solution, our friends at Liver Health Formula have come up with an all-natural supplement, uh, contains 11 uh, clinically proven botanicals. They help recharge and protect your liver. So if you're looking to ignite your fat-burning metabolism, boost your energy, and transform how you look and feel, try liver health formula and receive a free bottle of blood sugar formula to reduce your sugar cravings when you order today. Try liver health formula by going to getliverhelp.com slash unashamed to claim your free bonus gift. That's getliverhelp.com slash unashamed. Be a liver. Protect your liver. So I, I launched in the, the message of Jesus and his death, his burial, his resurrection, and him being at the right hand of God. And then I was going to get to Ephesians, but you know, they only give you 25 minutes. So you'll have to but, do that next time you come back. Yeah. Oh, so that was the that gist. Was of it. That was excellent. That was really good. And I love the idea about the offense, you know, creates the better defense, which is really good. I mean, that's a good theme. Yeah, I just think at some point we go through that transition. It took me a couple of years from 14 years of age to 16. I was trying not to do wrong, which is what they're trying to do. They're trying not to do wrong. They, yep. They've screwed their life up. Families are all broken. It's chaos. At some point, you realize God has called us to something. Yeah. This is what the kingdom looks like. Right. And look, we've already noticed from Acts, it, it's not just the apostles, but it's disciples. It's the uh, deacons. 
I mean, people are doing one thing in common. There's a lot of things that are in common, but one thing is standing out. They are declaring that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead and he is alive and well. They are introducing Jesus to the world. And look, anytime you have a ministry where people are coming directly out of really raunchy, rough situations in from the world, and the bulk of your people are coming that way. In other words, you don't have the benefit of generational families that teach no. their kids from the beginning. These are all people that didn't get any of that, yep. and they're coming in. What, but what you're describing in a, in a lot of ways is what we're reading about in the book of Acts. It's people yep. coming. Because look, every leader in the book of Acts, just a few months before they were leading, including the very apostles, we're all scared rabbits, not understanding what the kingdom was even about. Especially and then they became the, one, the leaders of this one movement. who wrote most of the letters in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul, was the, the, the king of them all. And then he was killing them. Oh, I mean. <laughs> I mean, he was literally rattling them up and killing them. So, yeah. Obviously, obviously well, it shows you the power of what God can do. We left off on Philip in Acts 8, who was, look, he was just one of the guys who the apostles had chosen of the seven. Yeah, one of the Magnificent Seven, I call them. Yeah, to help these widow ladies from Acts chapter 6. And right. now he's in a famous story. I mean, I, I guess this was the first African convert. Can Unless we... there was somebody in that original group. you know, that We know of. Pentecost, right, but it's the first guy we read about for sure. Specifically, they're out in the middle of a desert, and like I said uh, before, it was the culmination of Acts one eight, which was Jesus' command: Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the utter ends. This is the utter ends. We're going out now. And I made the point, and I didn't bring up you know this story in Acts eight, but you know when the Holy Spirit told Philip go that go to that chariot and stay near it, and you hear somebody reading Isaiah. I mean, granted, at this stage of the kingdom, you know, the Lord is still saying, hey, go here, do this, don't fear. But now that you've read these stories and you know, after reading them and via the Holy Spirit, you have the Holy Spirit. If you're looking for opportunities on a daily basis, it's not an audible voice, but it's the same ideas. Yeah. People have the same problems. That's why I went I went through the list of sins and the things with Jonah. People have the same basic problems. Our tent's wearing out, and we make mistakes. Yeah. And we're looking for a purpose on earth. And you made the point earlier, Jace, about not knowing the verses and, some, and sometimes that holding people back. Again, this story with Stephen first and now Philip, these are guys who were tapped on the shoulder by the apostles because they didn't want to give up their ministry of the Word of God, it says, to wait on tables for this need that was there. It didn't say that it was less. It just meant we, we were doing this. Look what happens to two of these guys that just started out by serving and submitting. That's Stephen what I'm gives saying, one huh? of the best messages I've ever heard from the Word, from the Old Testament. And then Philip understands what the guy's talking about in Isaiah 53. So here's two guys that weren't apostles, but had the ability because they had encountered Jesus to be able to minister to other people. So don't say you don't have enough. You got enough. When yeah. you got the Holy Spirit, you got enough. Yep. You got enough to serve. And the Word of God will be there. The same one that wrote the Word of God is the one living in you. So don't worry. You got it. Exactly. So I don't know. Maybe it got into this. We got into this temple worship, you know, invite people to church. The The preacher is supposed to do the work, whatever that those all are. But it just seems like... What's supposed to happen, especially since there's 8.1 billion people there, people who believe in the Lord need to move and declare. Yeah. However you want to do that, it's fine with me, but that's what we need to do. That's right. And don't stop learning and growing. And like you said, learn learn the verse. I mean, the more you know, the better it is. But we're not saying don't you shut start it down. representing Jesus. As your way of your lifestyle, there will be a constant stream of people that come your way. That's right. They're, they're yesterday, five more. Yep. Next, next, next week from now, same message. Yep. 
Same, but a different group of people. It's they're yeah. they're from all the different states. Yep. Some people are actually in the world. You know, you I said, who's that guy there? And they said, he works on the other side of the earth. He works in Africa. I said, hmm. yeah. I said, well, good, good to have him. So, they're they're, they're coming from every direction. That's right. Close and far. Well, let me, let me uh, you want to get into Acts 9 in this last segment, and then we'll we'll start breaking it down the next. Uh, was there anything else you wanted to do from Acts 8? Anybody? We good? We we tell the story of Philip. And- I mean, I guess we, we didn't really, at the very end, I do say that there's something about this this type of, uh, how would I, how would you describe it? I mean, this is, they're, they're on a road out in the middle of a desert. Now I, I I agree God orchestrated it, but there's something very uh, encouraging, inspiring, exciting about a guy hearing about Jesus and being out in the middle of nowhere and having a spontaneous response. Yeah, I mean, the I, urg- I the, the, it's the urgency of it. It's 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 uh, you know we we have good vigorous debate on baptism and we have on this podcast but i think the one thing that we would definitely all agree on is it should be an immediate urgency to it that yeah. we've lost i say not everybody's lost i think i think it's coming back i mean yeah you know, i've been at several conferences happened on college campuses all across the country now yeah where the gospel is being preached and then immediately um it's being followed up with with baptism and i think there is something special about the immediate urgency and the nature of what's happening here it does kind of give this um physical tangible expression and and he wasn't waiting i mean he was this oh guy i agree right now. this I mean, this to do that. and there yeah. was a, there was a couple i was first pothole they saw the one who yeah. was lost and didn't know who jesus was the first water they saw he said look there's some water. Why shouldn't I be baptized? Well, he's talking to the man who preached the good news to him. He, yeah. he now knows who Jesus is. He said, I need to be baptized right now. And they stopped the chariot, and he was. And, yeah. and then Philip whisked away, gone, went on down the road. or the I don't know how far it was from where he took off and stopped, but he took off out of that. I actually oh, yeah. looked it up. It was, I think it was like 20 miles. Yeah, it's a pretty good little disappearance. I mean, there's, there was a uh, – this happened at Auburn University recently. Um, Jenny Allen and – what's that guy's Jonathan Paducah or something like that. JP, they call him. They were – they were doing something there, like a like for for a college age, preach the gospel, and then they offered up a time of baptism afterwards. And it they all went down to the water, and they were just gonna. I think I think one of the girls was just like, "No, I, I want to be baptized." Uh, I think it was like one person. I can't remember the, exactly how it went down. Well, they get down there, and then all of a sudden, there's like hundreds of of young people in this pond in on Auburn campus that are being baptized. I saw the video of it and it was so powerful. And I think what it is, is man, you start moving like that. It's, it's like a, I don't know the physical nature of saying, I'm going to get in water. I'm going to submit myself to, I mean, and I'm going to do this in front of people. Um, It's just, it just has, it's just dripping with the book. of 99% of them cry. Yeah. I noticed that. <laughs> okay, that. So, but you're right, Zach, and it's because it takes us back to these moments that we're reading in the early days. This is what was happening, both individually and even in Acts two and Acts four as groups. Yeah, uh, this there was at least I did a marriage event this weekend, and a couple came there with all sorts of issues. And but so before we even got there to do our part, someone, the pastor or someone, had shared Jesus with them that this was a starting place both individually, but also as a married couple, it could change them. So over the course of that weekend, they became convinced that's what they needed. They needed to start in Christ and go from there. So Sunday after we spoke, um, they wanted to be baptized. And they had a tank back in the back of this thing. It was kind of a temporary public location, but they, I'd never seen anything quite like it. They sit down in that thing, and it was the easiest way to baptize anybody because they're sitting down in the water. But when they both were in tears, Dad, but they left there with something different. And to your point, Zach, this physical, that they came that weekend ready to divorce 
but but trying to give it some other shot, they encountered yeah. Christ, and now they have hope as they leave as something new, and it will be different for them. I have no doubt about yeah, it. Yeah, I well, wanted to check it out to see how much power there is in it on the story of Jesus. Like yesterday, two raised their hand. We just asked them, did you come here to follow Jesus, be baptized and follow Jesus? I said, if you are, you listen very carefully. Two raised their hands, five were baptized. That's the way it works every time. Yeah, but you declare Jesus, and, and yeah. I think I think the underlying before principles are— Before you declare are, him, there'll be a number. After you declare him, the number rises, just— 99% of the time. And the reason we bring this up is because we, we made the point the last time we were in this text that verse 37 in the NIV, I don't know, is it in, in what's your version, that? Well, if you read 35, 35 says, Philip began with that very passage of Scripture in Isaiah, told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here's water. Why shouldn't I be baptized? That's what I see every Sunday morning, right there. The omitted verse that is not in the earliest manuscript, manuscript said, Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. The eunuch answered, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. I was just going to make the point whether that verse is was in the early manuscripts, it doesn't matter because this narrative flies in the face of a lot of of organizations under the church umbrella on what they teach about baptism. Yep. I mean, it do, it just does. Most teach this idea of that this is a public thing to show that you're in the church. or Well, they, these guys were in nowhere public. They were out in the middle of nowhere. On a desert road, and the just, guy just who saying did, that that he, he had no idea who Jesus was at the beginning, didn't even know who he yeah, was. No, I had no to, idea. Yeah, and to Phil's point, he told him about the good news of Jesus because Jesus is what saves him. But then he saw water, and said, "Well, here's water." So evidently, they had that conversation had come up it some, had to somewhere been. in there. Not that this is a formula, right? But the fact that it just happened. And so I have a theory on this because another uh, thing that it kind of flies in the face of is all these arguments over whether you should do it or not. I mean, there, there's tons of argument. And what the eunuch asked is actually the opposite perspective, which is what I believe your perspective should always be. Why shouldn't I do it? Why shouldn't I be baptized? Yeah. What an opportunity. And I want to do is, it. That is a better question. When I, yeah. when I want to <laughs> do it better. now. So when people ask me that, okay, so let's say, and I'm like, well, why shouldn't you do it? Let's, let's answer that question before we get into hypotheticals. And whatever your answer is, read all the verses. But when you start down that rabbit hole, you're getting way past what you should be getting past, which is that, you know, Jesus is Lord. He's innocent. He's the son of God. He died for you. He was resurrected. He's at the right hand of God. You believe that? Why shouldn't you? And in my opinion, you have a that little phrase, stop the chariot. I think a lot of times we need to just stop the argument, stop the whatever you want to put at the end there and say, what are we doing here? Yeah. Let, let, let's do this. Yeah. And I do think in, in theorizing, I think people have a hard time with this because it is the heart, which is a spiritual concept that you're given to God. But he made us physical beings, and he gave us an opportunity to reenact something that we believe in a physical way, not unlike the Lord's Supper. And yeah. so, you know, when you carry this all the way through, what's so weird, which I think another thing this flies in the face of, which you'll see in uh, Paul's conversion, the one you read, Phil, in Acts 22, when he said, what are yeah. you waiting for? Arise, be baptized, and wash your sins away. What's amazing to me is John's baptism, you got the you got forgiveness of sins and no spirit. But you did get forgiveness of sins. And then people today say, well, 
in Jesus' baptism, you get the Holy Spirit, but not necessarily forgiveness of sins, which is kind of ironic if you think about it. Well, didn't he's the one who died for your sins. Even in John's baptism, they yeah. were they were believing in the one that was to come yeah, were who for would die for their sins. Yeah. So I think we just our theologians have talked about this subject so much where they've ironically watered it down instead of just asking the eunuch's question, why is this story in the Bible? They're out there. This guy is on cloud nine because he's found a way to live forever, a way to start over. I mean, he he's like, this is heaven and earth meeting together in Jesus, and I can be a part of this. And so you wouldn't want to take a time out and have a 10-minute argument about whether you should do this or not. He said, why shouldn't I? All right, so we're out of time. Hold that, Zach. Hold that thought. We'll uh, we'll pick it up here before we get into Saul and finish that discussion in the next podcast. We'll see you next time on Unashamed. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube. And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.